Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about how to use Blur in DaVinci Resolve. We might want to use Blur for privacy, or to put focus onto an area of the screen, or for effects. I'll show you how to apply a static blur on your clips, which can take your clip from this to looking like this. Here you can see that we've blurred out the names of the outfitters and the fisheries. Adding this type of blur is very simple. I can help whenever you have elements on your video that are fixed in place. The other type of blur that we'll look at is a tracked blur, where the blur needs to follow an object in your video that's moving. For example, where we want to blur someone's face as they walk across the scene. We'll be using the colour page to do our blur effects today. Let's go there now. Here we are in the colour page in Resolve which we can use to add blur effects to our clip. In fact, let's take a step back for a second and click back to the edit page. On the edit page, put some cuts around the segment that contains the clip that you want to blur. This makes things simpler. I'll put an edit point in the middle of our static blur demo clip here as an example. I use Ctrl and B for this, though you may have your own shortcut. Now let's click into the clip we want to edit and go back to the colour page. OK, we're back in the colour page and we have our small clip on screen. The first thing to do is to add a node. Make sure that you have the nodes view active. You can find that at the top right of the screen and click on it to activate if it's not already. To add a serial node we can either right click on our primary node here and choose add node, add serial, or we can press the shortcut which for me is set to alt and s. Now we have a few nodes that we can use to add our blur. We use nodes here so that we can apply our effects without directly altering the source clip. This keeps things tidy and separates each effect that we add and later, if we want to check things, we can disable individual nodes. Let's give each node a label. We'll call node 2 Psychart Blur and node 3 Neon Blur. Of course, use names that mean something to you or specific to the blurs that you're going to create. Let's click node 2 and we'll take a look at the types of blur effect available in the colour page. In the effects library we can see Resolve FX Blur and in the category there are seven different types of blur. Let's use the Gaussian Blur and apply it to the Psychart Blur node. The blur applies across the entire clip. We want to focus the effect on a specific part of the frame. Make sure that the second node is selected by clicking on it. To apply the effect to a specific part of the frame we need to use what's called a power window. Click on the Windows subpage. In the Windows subpage you can see that we have five options Linear, Circle, Polygon, Curve and Gradient. We're going to use a linear window so click on the word Linear and you should see a box appear on screen. If you don't see it Make sure that the power window is selected over to the left hand side. Now you'll notice that the blur effect is contained within the window. Move your cursor into the window and you'll see a crosshair appear. You can click and drag the window over to the area of the frame that you want to use to blur. We'll zoom in using the mouse scroll button to make it easier to fit the window to the object that we want to blur. We can also click and hold the mouse scroll wheel to move the preview window a little. Moving the mouse over to one of the blue circles, we can adjust the shape of the window. We can set the power window view to off to more easily see the area of the effect. Head over to the edit page to see how it looks there. If we also need to obscure another area, we can press another window type or the same type to have another window appear. And we can do the same with that window. 
to fix the size and shape. That's blurred out the SciCart name. Let's move on to the Neon node by clicking that. We can see that the Neon node is not crowded by the two power windows that were obscuring SciCart. Let's add a polygon window here to demonstrate polygon windows. These windows are essentially a more flexible type of window. As well as dragging points, we can also click anywhere on this outline to add an edge point. This will allow us to contain more complex shapes. Drag a mosaic blur over to the neon node. Notice that the effect is constrained to the window, even though we created the window first in this example. Now we have blurs over both Neon and Seagart's names. Heading over to the edit page, we can see that the effect remains in place for the duration of the clip. That's how to apply a blur over a non-moving part of your clip. What if you wanted to blur something that's moving? Let's look at that. In this scene, our friendly NPC walks across the set from right to left, occasionally looking directly at the camera. We want to blur her head. The setup is similar to before. We've created a node and given it a name. Next, we apply a power window over the person's head. We'll use a polygon window to set that up. Then, Add your chosen blur effect. Let's use mosaic. Now for the fun part. In the sub page menu, click tracker. Next, find the icon that says track forwards, which is in the tracker window and click it. The scene will play through until the next cut and resolve will try to track your object. Here, the tracking works for a few frames, but then gets confused. How do we fix that? Drag the playhead back to the last point with good tracking. It may help to zoom in. For us, that's around here. In the tracker window, click Frame. This mood allows us to make adjustments that affect a specific point in time rather than the whole clip. Make a small adjustment, such as moving one of the window points. A keyframe is automatically inserted. Now, move forwards by a few frames using the right arrow key. Put the cursor into your window so that it becomes a crosshair and adjust the window so that it stays over your subject. Repeat this process a few times. Then, press Track Forwards. See if your subject is now tracked correctly. If it works, great. Otherwise, we can try a different approach to tracking, and that is to track another area of the scene that moves in the same way as your subject. In this example, we can use the subject's coat, which has more chance of being tracked correctly. To do this, Move the tracking window using the crosshair over the area you want to track. Then, track forwards again. Look at deselecting Tilt, Zoom, Rotate and 3D. If you get a good enough track, then you can then use manual adjustments to pull the rest into line. Then, with the tracking completed, move the playhead back to the start of the alternative track. Now, click and drag the window back to the subject's head. With that done, you should have the complete tracking, which gives you the scene that we saw in the intro. Lastly, I'll drop back into clip mode and demonstrate the interactive mode, where you can select an area of analysis points that the tracker uses and delete or add points. This can be useful if your tracking area is intersected by another object. I hope that this introduction to blur and tracking in Resolve has been useful.
Thanks for watching. Bye.